We were not created for this level of hatred. What happens is we hate them because they have a stand, yet now we're hating them because of our stand. We're no different than them. We become what we judge. We're the same thing. We're judging somebody who we think's judging somebody else. You best believe that if I'm encountering you and you're angry, I'm not going to sit there and get angry with you and judge you. I'm going to appeal to your heart. It does no good hating the hater. No, I'm going to try and come in as a bridge of love. Three, two, one. Hello and welcome to episode 83 of Ruse Radio. We are back at it again with a very special guest. Special guest? Could you please introduce yourself? Hey, what's up? My name is Shawnee Newbecker. Shawnee Newbecker. Yes. And Shawnee, we have changed over the last, what is it? I think it's been about two years since we last spoke. So I, I want to say maybe it's a year. A year? year. It's been over a year. A I can say that much. Okay. A yearish. We'll a say year-ish. a yearish. I like that. Yearish, yeah. But, so how, when we last spoke, it was completely True Heart Project. There was no True Heart photo. Nothing had, uh, had, blossomed just yet. So tell us about that blossoming. So True Heart Project has evolved into True Heart Photo, which is a photography business. Um, It's been a pretty incredible transition, and I did it because initially this was like a video style, like a document, mini documentary style uh, project highlighting uh, people in the community, uh, the beauty of people in the community that we look past every day. And the problem, I kept running into an issue with sustainability. It just wasn't sustainable financially. So I kind of went through this whole metamorphosis through COVID and everything else. And it's just been like, what do I do? Do I give up True Heart Project? Um, or do I do something else? Like, what am I doing? And the idea just came to take photos. And this has been a more financially sustainable way to do what I want to do, which is to help tell people's stories. So, mm. mm-hmm. okay. using photography. I see. So now I'm not just highlighting, like, the people that we look past every day. I mean, we look past so many different types of people every day. Um, but I just want to, I'm going a little bit broader have you seen People of New York or Humans of New York? Yes. Yeah. yeah I They're, love that stuff, man. It's very similar in the yeah. sense of photography highlighting people. Yeah. People that you would look past because mm-hmm. every person has a story and they go so much deeper than that surface image. Yes. Right? I love it. I love that um, that series. I've, I've watched that for quite some time. How long has that been going on? For forever. Long Feels time. like. But yeah, I just really want to give people a chance to tell their story or to... Um, express something, whether it's a battle that they've been through, a business that they're building, a dream that they have, um, you know, something that they're going through. I just want to help people to express themselves and tell their own story. Yeah. Yeah. And that's been my goal for a long time now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had a recent epiphany where I realized, like, that's my purpose in life even, is um, like with this show, I'm able to shine my light upon others and I've noticed that it occurs in this strange way where you can't predict it. Like people come in and by allowing them to share and allowing them to share their stories, mm-hmm. um, there, there's just something magical that happens there. If you know the proper amount of interjection to, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like you can't put too much of yourself into there. But if you do put the right amount, it makes that person able to open up so much more. And, and I've, I've realized like that's something I have in me naturally. And, and, and if I can do that for as many people as possible, that's, that'd be a beautiful way to live a life. So that's, that's to me, I, I feel the same way in the sense that I just like to do it in this medium rather than photography. That's the only difference uh, is that yeah. I can easily do it through something like this. I've realized it. Like, I don't have to, when I was doing interviews, it was a little more work. It took a long time to curate that content. Yeah. This is really just, we have a conversation and then boom, there's this beautiful, beautiful representation of you and you can carry that with you. You always have it and you yes. wouldn't have produced it on your own. I was required for that to occur. So <laughs> there's some, there's, there's just a nice feeling about being able to do that. It, it feels fulfilling in a way that a lot of things don't. Well, it is because everybody has a heart, you know, like they, they have a desire to be seen. This is our last podcast, to be seen, to be heard, to be loved, you know, to be appreciated, um, to be respected in their community. And yeah. so, you know, even the business side, 
of this, you know, um, taking photos of entrepreneurs who are just starting out in their dream, you know, telling the story of their dream, their business, you know, in communities like in Flint, there's a lot of people who have a lot of obstacles to being right. heard. You know, they don't have a lot of money for photography to, you know, talk about their business. So for me, I, I'm really trying to elevate the voice of others. You know, I want others to be seen. I want others to be heard. I want um, people to be taken seriously, you know, whether they're starting their business or just on their own personal journey. I think it's just so important. So it's all about empowering their voice. Yeah. So. Yeah, and I think when you take someone seriously, they take themselves seriously. Yes. It sets an example in their mind. I mean, I can only tell you how much that formed my music career. Just a couple people. Just I can even think of one specific person mainly, which was my girlfriend's dad at the time. And he just believed in me in a way that no one ever had. And he was he would help me record, he would give me equipment, he would listen to my mixes and like tell me wow this is so good like you have such a good ear and just hearing that from somebody meant so much because these are things that i already felt but no one was expressing this to me mm -hmm. on a personal level so i didn't feel that confirmation and just to get that it really helps you go an extra mile for sure it, it changed the way i looked at things yeah and that's what hap that's what's happened time and time again in taking photos of people um the one client I had, she looked at herself after we got done with her session and I showed her her photos and she said, Shawnee, I've never seen myself through the lens of somebody else. I've never seen my own beauty this way. She's like, I look so beautiful. I didn't even realize how beautiful I was. I'm like, yes, <laughs> win. This is a win. This Mission is what it is about. Somebody else, another client, she's starting her small business, and she's actually building. She's not starting. She's building. And when I took photos of her cakes, she was like, that's it. I'm raising my prices. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. And she leveled up the visual rep representation of her business. She, I mean, like her whole vibe leveled up just because the photos like just showed her what she really was producing, what she was really bringing forth into the world was so valuable, was so beautiful. It's high class. Yeah. It's excellent. Yeah, and the I presentation that. means so much. Yeah. Like the way, that's, that's why I love being able to do this. That's why I make the connection because this is an easy presentation. Mm -hmm. And I can't put anything on top of you because you're doing it. You're just showing up and talking. So like I, that it's being able to present somebody in a way that they feel represents them, but also like with that to elevate it too, to and be again, able to elevate them. It's their true heart. Yeah. Right. Yeah, like right. that's my business thing. True heart photo. Why? Because I'm representing the true heart. Yeah. Of you, of your business, of your product, of your story, like whatever it is, like I'm capturing it. Mm. And it's so amazing because I love people so much. Um, I love their story. I love who they are. We're all so beautiful. I was just writing a letter to somebody the other day. P.S. Who writes letters anymore? But <laughs> I was writing a letter, and I, you know, they were asking me what my favorite, um, my who my favorite artist was, and you know, and I was like, God, because if you just look at this planet and everything in it, like, and the people, it's just so beautiful. We are works of art. We're like masterpieces you know and just to be able to have a glimpse of the beauty and the glory of this human in front of me and their creative expression it's it's an honor it really is yeah yeah so. yeah and that's why uh i try to like w one thing i've i've figured out through doing these podcasts is that there's a certain rhythm to everybody, and once you figure that out, mm -hmm. like you can really, it, it's not even a thing that I do consciously. It's just something that I've noticed that happens. Like people will come in, and you'll talk with them, and everybody kind of develops their own rhythm. But it's about how much space that I give them that makes it work. Like if I let them finish their bits, basically, <laughs> like that's that's it's kind of that's really what it is. If someone wants to say something and they weren't done. It's like catching that and being like, oh, they want the true heart. They mm -hmm. wanted to share that. That They wanted to share that piece of them. And yeah. then I cut it off and shared a piece of me. A lot of the time it's something like that. Or it's just 
meets changing the subject when they mm-hmm. were on to something. Mm-hmm. And like the more and more you conversate even with more and more people, the more you see that is yeah. everybody has this different way and yeah, it's 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 an interesting thing for sure. It, people people are interesting. People are yes. people are characters. I I truly believe that everybody is worth talking to. Mm-hmm. How about this? I propose an idea. Okay. True Heart Talks. In my brain, I've been trying to think of a converse, or, or a name for a podcast for you this whole mm. time. There it is. True Heart Talks. True Heart Talks. I like yeah. that. I mean, if you come up with a better name, let me know. That's just that's. I was trying to think like two heart, true heart podcast, true heart conversations. None of those sound. It's good, so crazy. True heart talks. because I have been thinking about a podcast. Well, it fits you know? the format of what you're doing. Yeah. That's I, that's why I made the connection immediately. <laughs> it's really the same thing. It's just true it's even talks. easier. You're you're yeah. not even you don't even have to take any pictures. <laughs> right. Well, no, I mean, I probably would. I'd be taking. Oh, you could double up though. Yeah, you could I'd make it a whole up. package. You know, I'd be using that. That would be amazing. Oh, that's like, smart. You could take the pictures and have it as part of the podcast. Mm-hmm. Even like, oh, True Heart Talks. I like that. I know. I was. I was also thinking about a podcast, and I was talking with somebody else. My boy Mondo from uh, Texas. We were talking about the approach, and I was like, if I Ooh. ever do a, a podcast, I don't even know if there's one out there, but I would name it the Approach. <sighs> that's. Almost generic enough to where it's, it could be taken. It could be. Yeah. It could be because I always think about, you know, people's approach to their, you know, how they're approaching their life, how they're approaching their job, how they're approaching their their dream, you know, how they're approaching healing. But I really like True Heart Talks. So well, it's True on Heart brand. Speaks, True Heart Talks. In it's on sense, brand. It, yep. you, you kept the True Heart thing yes. throughout. So if you keep that thread going, Ooh, it only makes sense. That would be fun. Uh, I like it. I like it. Although I do like the concept you just laid out a second ago, too. Yeah. That was also nice. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, and that could be something that we even um, highlight within the or, podcast. Yeah. Or just do, like, a separate segment mm-hmm. called that. Like, mm-hmm. anything like that. There's plenty of ways to go. Because, I mean, I just feel like what happens when I do this podcast is people come in here and then it ends up, like, <laughs> I've had so many people say, like, whoa, it's like therapy. And I'm not even <laughs> trying to do that to them. It's just I think I got this philosophical, like, larger-than-life way of talking about things that mm-hmm. pulls that out of people. And I think if you had your approach with different people, you'd pull something out of people in a different way every time. Always. You're, I think you have the same kind of personality, you know? You're, I do. Yeah. So it'd be an interesting podcast for sure. It'd work. It would definitely be therapy, too, I'm sure. Like, <laughs> for everybody, because I'm all about the heart, right? Yeah. So, so I'm always, like, curious about people's hearts, like what's going on and who they are or what do they struggle with or what are they wrestling with or what are they getting stuck on or, you know, I'm always about that. So, yeah, because, I mean, that's what people like are really about. It's like a good sickness, though, like, because I'm, I'm just always looking at that. I mean, yeah. I can... I. There are, pro, there are pros and cons about caring about humans too much. <laughs> like, I like to say that I love humans, but I... I love humanity, but I hate humans, I guess I could say. I'm like, <laughs> humanity's great. It's beautiful. It's something that to praise. But mm-hmm. some humans, you can't look so deep. you got to actually give up at a certain point. Like, that, but, but, but there's still something so beautiful <clears throat> about the entire image. It's like a, a mosaic. That's yeah. how I like to think about it. We all just form this bigger picture, and that's what's so beautiful about each individual story and person is it's so much greater than itself inherently. It really is, and, and no matter how good, no matter how bad, quote-unquote, you know, somebody is, you know, I, I can never, for me personally, I can never look at somebody and say I hate them or they're terrible because... I use I'm, the word hate lightly. Oh, I know. <laughs> I'm not judging you for that, by the way. But I, but I would like, never. I feel the same way. But though. it's That's just why like I, I value. Like I saw some. I saw some posts recently about somebody who passed away. Somebody who's very well known, and I saw people celebrating their death as if it was a victory. That kind of broke my heart a little bit. Like, why would you? How? Like, you know, are we so out of touch with our own heart? That we celebrate somebody dying, well, like what made me truly realize this uh, that that the nature of things is so far gone like that is yeah. that I'm not even being political as I say this, but mm-hmm. I'm sitting here and I'm with this rapper friend, and I'm he he's looking on Twitter and he's like, oh man, Trump's got COVID, 
And I'm like, oh, that's crazy. And he says, I hope he dies. Oh. And I, I remember I had a visceral reaction to him saying yeah. that, like you just did. I was like, dude, oh. I can't believe you just said that. Like, wait a minute. Did you mean that? Why would you say something like that? I like I would not let it go for the rest of that whole day. Yeah. Because I couldn't believe that he actually said that. And then I probably went on a similar rant of like how, oh man, we're just so disconnected. <laughs> like how far can we go to where, you know, we we hate so viciously that we celebrate and mock the death of another human being. Yeah. I can't get with that. Me neither. I cannot get with that. I cannot support that. As a matter of fact, if you, you know, conduct yourself in that way, I really cannot fully trust myself in your presence. Right, because I think what happens there is it's like that creates this sense of this person is... You're, you look at people in a certain way. Like it, it sets that stage. Like if you did something that was so terrible, I would not. I, I wouldn't care if you died. Yeah. And, if you and make a mistake, you should never look at any human that way. And as soon as you start doing that, that can just those, those walls can get more and more narrow. It's just a terrible way to think about things. Yeah. So it's basically if you if you make a mistake that I am very much opposed to, you deserve to die. Yeah. You deserve torture. You deserve hell. You deserve whatever. Fill in the blank, you right. know? And I'm going to celebrate ha 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 when you die. Like this is a good weekend because the victory because so and so died. Like what the heck? I mean, like check your heart. I'm just going to say that. Like check your heart because you have lost a piece of your own humanity if you think like that. And I you know, some people may shut me off but I don't, I don't care because for me, I know that that is not your true heart to yeah. celebrate. When somebody dies, that is not your true heart. It's just not, even at somebody who you disagree with, you know? If somebody who I disagree with, like, passes away, I'm not going to sit here and be like, I'm so happy, man. I don't have to disagree with this person anymore. Their presence is no longer on this planet. Whew. Like, what kind of jaded has happened to you to make you think like that? I think that when you think about other people as versions of yourself, like if I took the same exact steps that that person took, I would be them. Things are different too. Like I think that we just don't think about things like that and that's the problem. We don't mm -hmm. think of other humans as humans like us. No, yeah, they become objects. So right. when we disagree with them, and this is what culture has taught us, and we talked a lot mm -hmm. about that, on the last podcast, but like, you know, they become objects to us and we lose a part of our humanity and where we are rejecting their humanity. They are now objects. Yeah. And, and this was never meant to be that way. We were never meant to be that way, you know, and, and we have no idea the depths of the world within that person. We, you know, even the, if somebody who passes away, let's just say, it's a, a political leader or a religious leader or a somebody else, you know, and they pass away and you celebrate and you despise them and you curse them. Like, you have no idea what the span of that person's life was. You don't know the good that they did. You don't know the stuff that happened in the secret places of their life. You're judging them based on what the media has shown you, you know, like... Don't be a robot. Well, and I think that don't the, be a robot. Don't don't be a puppet of the culture and of media. You know, like think, think well, for yourself. Think mm, about your heart. Think about that heart. You know, yeah. like I, I, it just like I don't know. Like we were not created for that kind of thing. We were not created for this level of hatred. We were not created for that. That like literally injures our own heart when we do that. We just don't even realize it. And what happens is we become, we hate somebody because of their difference of opinion, their mistake, maybe what they said, maybe how they are as a, as a person right now, but we are no different than them when we, when we are doing that. Let's just say it's somebody who has a difference of opinion regarding whatever, and we hate them because they have a stand Yet now we're hating them because of our stand. We're no different than them. We become what we judge. We're the same thing. We're judging somebody who we think's 
judging somebody else or, you know what I mean? Like, it's just like we think we're here, but we're actually doing the same exact thing that the person we disagree with. It's just a different a different version. Do yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and it's, it, I think the only thing that cycle. can stop that is just self-awareness and being yeah. able to recognize that in yourself that, you know, only you can control your own judgments, your own actions. So if you choose to judge that person, you're attracting that judgment back towards you. I mean, if you yeah. don't want to think that way, you don't have to. Nobody's making you think like that. And I think a lot of it is just that we, we form these patterns, like you said about culture. Yeah. I think that culture presents things as it's either A or B. Mm -hmm. It's one or the other. Yeah. And that's how everything is presented. Or, or it's like A, a hates B. Right. It's not even just there's A or B. It's like A and B have to have a war. And, and it's, it's constantly these things. When the humanity, the human experience, the mm -hmm. real thing I feel when I talk with other people is never this. It's always that there's this duality in everybody, and everybody is everything all at once. And so if that's the case, then I don't believe that anybody's anything in one moment. I can't believe that, and mm -hmm. I know I'm not that. So that's what frustrates me so much about the whole... It's yeah. like people forget what they are, and they yeah. forget what humanity is. When you're a kid, you, you, you don't care if this no. kid says something crazy. You don't. You just hang out with them the next day. You're like, oh, that's so and so. You know what I mean? Like, the, Brian's you, wild. You just think, yeah. <laughs> you just accept. You know, like that's just how they are, or that's you know he just said something stupid, whatever. But you know their heart because you're interacting with them every day. Exactly. You know? So like my stance, you know, and I I know that I I was saying some stuff just a minute ago. Like, come on, like stop. This is. This is not your heart. This is not. But but you best believe that if I'm encountering you and, like, you're angry and you're saying that, I'm not going to sit there and get angry with you and judge you. I'm going to appeal to your heart. Like, I'm going to listen to you. I'm going to listen and figure out why you feel that way. Yeah. You know, and kind of talk on that because or trying to appeal to your heart on that level, you know, because it's not it does no good hating the hater. It does no good you know, in, in every single aspect. So let's say you hate somebody, and then here I come, and I see you hating somebody, so I'm going to hate you. Oh, look at this triangle we formed, you know? No, I'm going to try and come in, like, as a bridge of love, right? So, like, I've had so many different conversations with people who um, have racism, you know, embedded in their heart from the generations, you know, who don't understand why people are so angry because of this, this, and this, you know, or don't understand the injustice. I have those conversations to help bring some light on that person that they can't, yeah. you know, that they're canceling or they wish were dead, you know. So I'm always trying to bridge that gap somehow to bring love on the scene, to get people in touch with their true heart again, you know. It's all about that for me, you know, just living from your heart. Yeah. And I think that so, if you truly disagree with an idea, you have to hear that idea out to even form a proper counter idea. You have to know what that person really thinks, not what someone's yeah. telling you they think. And how are you going to figure that out? By talking to that person. You ask them, hey, why is it that you think this? And then they'll explain it to you, and you can be like, mm -hmm. well. <laughs> right. But you can't do that without knowing how they really feel. I mean, yeah. um, I always mention him in these conversations, but Daryl Davis, the guy who befriended a KKK member and got him to leave, mm -hmm. that's a fantastic example of someone who really went the extra mile. And it makes me think, too, with something like this, it's yeah. always been a goal of mine to bring people on that other people wouldn't bring on because I want to yep. hear what everyone has to say. However, then you run into this whole new idea of platforming others and where you lose sponsorships based on who you might bring on and what you might say. Oh. And so I have to dance around certain things if I am in these certain situations. Mm -hmm. That's just the world we're in nowadays. So I, I, I thought about this a lot. Like, would I still bring on a, a KKK member on a Ruse radio just to interview mm. them, just to see what they would really say? Mm -hmm. like just a wild example like that. Right. Would you? I, honestly, I don't know. Because that would probably not play out the best. It wouldn't make me look great. <laughs> no, no. But that's just the way people perceive it. In my mind, it is an act of love. It is an act of listening to people and hearing people mm -hmm. out. But sure. it's just, it becomes this thing that's greater than you and you're greater than your view of love. Because other yeah. people, the way that society views love 
is separate than the way I view love and the way right. that you view love. Yeah. It frustrates me because love is this beautiful thing. I posted on Facebook recently that we're so far gone as a society mm. that we see true acts of love as sarcasm. Yes. And, and it just drives me nuts. Like, I could le legitimately say something nice to you that I mean, and I, I'm loving you, and you just take it the wrong way because you think I'm being ingenuine. Mm -hmm. It's, ah, it drives me nuts. It's but because, that's how we think about things. It's because our heart's programmed, right? So, yeah. And I think we touched on this before, too, but when you've been raised with a, a very difficult life and you've come to these conclusions as a result of those li of that life... You know, so nobody's ever genuine when they love me. They're always faking it. Every man, you know, doesn't love me. He's not true. He's not true. He's not genuine. Any man. So if that's what's been proven to your heart through your childhood, through your formative years, that's how you're going to act. That's how you're going to see things. Put on your glasses. That's how you see through your glasses. Until that part of your heart's been healed corrected and accepted like right. that you know because what we agree with we empower so back in the day when daddy was you know not there emotionally you know and barely loved you you know oh yeah hug pat pat okay go do your thing you know he doesn't really love me he'll never really love me you know so anybody else who's a man come into your life he doesn't really love me so how can they receive from you if they've never received it in the first place right so it's hard, like, and that's what I'm saying, like, I can't hate people because I can see beyond their present day action. Yeah. Because it goes back to childhood. It goes back to the foundation of how we were raised. It goes back to what happened in our heart as a result of the trauma and of the dysfunction and of the abuse or neglect. You that's know? why you ask why. Because yeah. Because there's always something that leads to something there's else. There's always. So... Um, you know, I was just doing a, a, a session with uh, people I mentor, and we were just talking about, like, what triggers you, you know. Something triggered them. They lost it. They've been making so many gains, but they lost it. And it's just like, you have to remember, this person is not who hurts you. You are choosing to remember the truth and remind yourself the truth. Every time you agree with the truth that this person loves you, and is safe, and is trustworthy, and you're agreeing with that, you're empowering that, you're canceling the lies that have been, you know, in your life this whole time. So it's just a reminder, like you're choosing to believe, choosing truth over what you experience, choosing the truth about that person, you know, but it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of work. So, yeah, and it takes a lot of perspective. It's very yeah. hard to even have a sense of perspective towards yourself that's outside of yourself, especially yes. if you don't have people around you that are being honest with you. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's I, that's why I think a lot of ways you can help with these problems, honestly, like not, not to minimize them, but even just getting out more, just like exercising and getting out and just getting outside, talking to people, You'll find mm -hmm. that, like, you are a different person when you talk to different people, and you can think outside of that mm -hmm. framework that you've built for yourself. But if you don't get out and you don't do it, you forget that, and you are whatever you built up in your head. Well, yeah, because if you're just trapped within your own fortress that you've built yeah. out of survival from your childhood, that's all you'll be. That's all you'll see. That's where you'll live, and that's where you'll die. Yeah, and trauma is a funny thing. I mm -hmm. mean, when it comes to remembered pain and, mm -hmm. like, just... Uh, triggers and all this i mean it, it's it comes in many shapes and forms mm -hmm. that's what's so interesting about it i just watched a movie last night captain phillips if you've heard of that, that? movie, it's tom hanks it's where uh the ship gets captured by F somali pirates and oh. they're it's a it's a huge freight ship and tom hanks is the captain it's where that scene comes from i'm the captain no <laughs> that scene. Okay, yeah, I have not seen that. Oh, it's good. It's a good movie. It's a great movie, and it's a good example of trauma because you'd experience a lot of trauma going through that. Yeah. So just the way they portray it in the movie and, and the way that it affects Tom Hanks' character, and Tom Hanks plays it really well, the whole... Mm. He sells it, that it's he's going through a lot here, and he went through a lot here. You know, you just feel that in the movie, so... Wow. Yeah, and and... and 
it's just it uh, it's just one way you could experience trauma just one crazy example of something that you could never let go for the rest of your life like, right a lot of those things well and it's so different too like we are all so unique uh as humans we're so we're so beautiful and individual so you can get hit over the head with a baseball bat and i can get hit over the head with a baseball bat and the both of us one of us will walk away and just shake it off and be fine and then the other one could be completely could die like could die or just never be the same for the rest of their lives oh i see yeah you know because we have unique spirits emotions you know, souls, like, our makeup is so different. You might have a different resilience in that situation than I do. Yeah. So a lot of times we judge each other because, like, oh, pff, that's trauma. Okay, you should see what I've been through. Mm -hmm. Right? Well, that's not necessarily fair. Because yeah, because it doesn't scale that way. It doesn't scale. It's not, it's not A plus B equals C. You know, it doesn't mean that, oh, just because you got hit over a baseball bat doesn't mean that you have trauma. Yeah. Actually, it does. You know, it right. just depends on the person who's receiving that. Anything you know? could be traumatic if you it's were. Crazy. Like, if you really want to look at it that way, like if you're, if you're, if a dog bites you and you're 25 years old, that yes. could be traumatic. Yes. It, anything can be traumatic. It just if it if it sets an example like that, or if it shocks you in just the right yeah. way, it because because that's why I opened it with saying trauma is a funny thing because mm -hmm. it's really something that goes beyond how a lot of people might understand it. It's, it's like, it's, it's just learned behavior. A lot of the time, it's the way that you think about things is, is deep down. It is built yeah. up from something else. Yeah. Like it, it's the way you think about yourself in these negative ways. That's usually some type of trauma that you built up for yourself. It's some, some story you tell yourself for some reason. You know? So I have a story. Okay. So, I was jumped when I was 17. I was jumped by a car full of guys. And there were like five or six, five in the car. It was a regular car, so I'd be five. And I was with my ex-fiance at the time. And we were walking down the street. And I saw them. And my ex had a really nice leather jacket on, like just really fire jacket, right? They pull up. They roll down the window. It's like 5 a.m. And... They were like, hey, where are we? And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> My fiance was like, you're in Roseville, dude. People got out, and I pushed, and I knew immediately. I knew a bunch of things immediately. Number one, I knew that if I was going to run, it was going to be very bad. So I pushed my fiance up against the fence, look at me, and I covered him. And they beat the crap out of us. But I, like, literally protected him, right? Yeah. Um, so I, you know, it, it didn't fully work because he still got a concussion. Um, but it was just a really crazy event. And in, in that moment, fear entered my life in such a crazy way. Like, yeah, because that had never happened to you before. Nothing like not that. Not like that. Now, I had been chased. I had been bullied. I had been followed home from school every day of my life. To this day, I still like to take different routes home from wherever I am because I always like to know different routes. And right. that's that comes from that, you know, having to walk home from school and not be predictable, not to be known my route, you know. So, like, there's a lot of behaviors that stem from trauma so like I'm getting street this knowledge was, on Ruse radio right yo now. yo so like this was like legit this was real shit and but as a result of that moment i was fear just like all of a sudden just like disabled me yeah i i couldn't walk from my house to the curb at night yeah i i, I was always you know scared um and it was the police wouldn't help like, nobody was helping me. I mean, I pre I protected my ex. The police wouldn't help. Nobody cared, you know? And um, so in my mind, it was like, I'm not protected. I'm not protected. And I'm that's not what safe. you learned from that. So yeah. that's, and so fear, so what happened was fear took root in my mind, and I began to agree with it, and my actions actually like was a, a reflection of that fear. So my actions, my thought process, my emotions were all in line with fear. And what happened was a rut began in my brain, 
you know those ruts, right? So if you're just walking around in a circle and you just keep walking in that circle, you're going to start digging into the ground and then it's going to get deeper and deeper and all of a sudden you're buried and you're deep. The ground's way up here and you're way down here. Well, that's what happened in my mind. So I realized that one day and I had to literally combat this You just described process. a rabbit hole visually. <laughs> Yeah, wow. that's what I did. Like, that's a rabbit hole. Wow. You do it in your mind, right? Yeah. So if you agree with it and you you just rehearse it, you 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 keep having the same thought process. It is what you know. As a result of trauma, a lot of times we have these thought processes. As a result of you know things that happen in our childhood, we have this thought process, and we're just so stuck, and we don't even realize we're in this massive rut in our mind. And so like. There comes a moment in time, and I had a moment in time when I realized that I was a prisoner to this. I was trapped by fear. So I had to do something. I had to fight. I had to find my power as a human being to rise above that. So I began to look at myself in the mirror and say... You know, I've not been given a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And I literally looked at myself in the face every day in the mirror, very awkwardly at first. But I just kept saying it over and over again. Sean, God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and love and sound mind. Like, I just, I had, I said it. And at first I was like, oh, this is stupid. What am I doing? I feel so stupid. I didn't realize what I was doing. I was rewiring my brain. And it broke the power of fear. What I agreed with, I empowered. So I had all this fear that I had been agreeing with that had me held prisoner, held captive. And when I mean held captive, I mean I was pretty sure somebody was going to murder me. When my husband would leave, I would put a big piece of furniture in front of the door and the door wall in my apartment because I was convinced somebody was going to murder, murder me. This is how bad it was, you know? So it was just like, this stuff is controlling my life. I can't live like this anymore. So that's what I started to do, and it broke the power of fear right here in my mind. I yeah. began to agree with the fact that I was powerful and that my mind was strong, and I was no longer okay with being a slave to fear, a prisoner of fear. And so that literally broke the power of fear in my life. It was crazy. But that's what we need to do. We need to, you know, find that find out who we are like wait a minute this is not my life this is not what i'm supposed to be living with or living under this is not i'm not supposed to be a slave to this trauma or this fear or this fill in the blank yeah you, you live know? under a rock so long you become patrick star it's crazy <laughs> seriously so for like, real though it's it's it it's something that i think it's it's hard to hear when someone tells you that to look at something like that as a growing experience and it sounds like they're talking down to you. Yeah. But and it sounds like they're they're minimizing the experience. But truly, if you are able to grow through something like that, you can grow through anything. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, here's the deal. I never like I, did I encounter fear after that all the time. But it was no longer the boss of me. Yeah, right. And it, it's the do I get these thoughts? Yes. Do I get that flinch? Yep. Does it tell me how to live my life? Nope. Well, and you hear nope. people who are successful, people who you'd think would not experience fear. They say they experience fear all the time. Yep. Like excellent performers, people who you'd love to see on a stage. Yep. They're so anxious before they go out there to play. They do it afraid. They're afraid, but they do it anyways. Yep. They just don't, like, I have that same voice in my head that tells me not to do things. I just don't listen to that voice. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's about knowing that fear is irrational. Yes. And knowing that fear is just a learned behavior. I said this last time, we'll say it again, false evidence appearing real. Ah, yes. Yeah, that is it. False evidence, fear. False evidence appearing real. And, it, and it's true. Mm -hmm. That's really what it is. It's, it's a false conclusion, if yeah. anything. It's like, this happened, and this happened, so yep. this. And and that conclusion just isn't... You don't know. It's it's not like just because you lived these few things that something like this may happen again. You really right. don't know. Just like you never had that happen up until that point. It right. doesn't mean it's ever going to happen again. Right. But it just did. And, and, and that's... It just... 
Man, it, it's hard to forget. I mean, my first true traumatic experience was my grandfather dying, and then my second one was losing my girlfriend of four years. And those are mm. two things that I know for a fact. It will they, they molded me as a person in my perspectives, but at the time, it was a real bummer. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's, it's so hard. Like, I just... I don't know if you even know this, but I just lost it. So I've been a mentor to youth for a long time. I used to run a program called Fuel for Teens. And it was those in society that, you know, people in culture that people are like, oh, man, those are bad kids. You know, they were my favorite. So um, but now all my Fuel kids are now all adults. And I had just found out that one of mine passed away, or well, he was really sick with cancer. And so I've been in his life the last five months, like a mother figure, like loving him, you know, helping him, bringing him lunch, doing whatever he needed, visiting, and in the last of his last days, being there, you know, for hours. And then uh, he just passed away last week, and I did the funeral for the family and everything. And it was the hardest funeral I've ever done. And it was kind of traumatizing because I'd never walked one of my kids to death like that before. I've never walked with them all the way to the end. And it was like, I still haven't processed it yet, right? And grief threatens to consume me because he's 34 years old, right? And But I had this thought, and I know I didn't have this thought just for me. (laughs) <laughs> the thought was, is that grief feels like an ocean. You never know. Like, it feels like you're, you're t- another Tom Hanks reference. What's the movie with Wilson, the, the ball, the soccer ball? Castaway, or what Cast is it? Away. So, like, he's out there in the water, and he's by himself, you know, and grief feels like that, right? And, but the ocean, right? There's the current. There's the waves. There's the creatures. You, it's the abyss, the, the depths of it, and that's what grief can be. You know, and it just feels like, like the ocean. It's like this powerful force, and it that, comes in waves. And it comes in waves, and you have no, you can't. Con- it's like you almost like can't even control it, right? And I was talking about this, like that fear is, li- or um, grief is like an ocean, and but yet even the ocean has its boundaries. Oh wow! Even the ocean can only go so far. Yeah, it has its limits. It has the beach, the edge of the waters where it cannot cross. It's not allowed. Yes, a tsunami wave might hit every once in however many years, right, to cross that boundary, but it retreats back, right? So even the ocean has its boundaries. And that empowered me this week to be able to step outside of grief, and to be able to step outside of the pain that I'm in and say, you have your limit. You know, I'm going to honor my heart. I'm going to grieve when I need to, but it can't take over my life. And it could easily leave me laying on this space right here, curled up and just not moving for days and days and days, weeks even. You know, that's the pain. Because when you love deep, you hurt deep, right? So I hurt deep, especially when I lose my kids. Um, but... It has its limits. And that empowered me to be able to live my life this week, you know, to be able to come to this podcast instead of saying, sorry, Wyatt, you know, like, man, I just went through something. I can't do this this week, you know? Yeah. So we have power to set boundaries, you know, with with whatever it is we're struggling with, even grief, you know. You don't have to swim in the ocean. You can always build a boat. (laughs) That's the truth. Yeah. That's the truth. And, you know, sometimes we find ourselves in it. You know, there's nothing that, sometimes we can't control that stuff, you know, but but we do have power. Yeah. We do. We're beautiful, brilliant. Yes, we're weak, but we're, we're also powerful human beings. Yeah. And I think that, I think that it's, again, it's like losing sight of that childlike mm-hmm. thing that uh, you feel powerful when you're a kid. You oh, do. yeah. Jump off of anything, like, adventure, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, often kids will have ten different career choices all at once. (laughs) So, Wait, what did you want to be when you were a kid? Oh, uh, actually, I got into music early enough. It was either that 
Or before that, it'd be professional wrestler. I was pretty convinced I was yes. going to be a professional wrestler. Yeah, I would work out. I would do squats while I watched Raw, and I would like, put my feet under the couch and like watch them wrestle while I did my sit ups. That sit-ups is what's and, up. Yeah, I was like, this is going to be me one day. What would your wrestler name be? <laughs> well, <laughs> funny enough, uh, that's the origin of the name Ruse. Really? Was, it was my name when I was professional wrestling with my Ruse friends. Ruse trivia, y'all, right <laughs> yeah. there. How did he get the name? Uh, wow. Yeah, and it, it was because my entrance theme was the song Ruse by Chevelle, so I was just Ruse made sense. Wow. And, uh, yeah, and I, I when I had Schizo Beats on, we talked about wrestling quite a bit because he's a wrestling <laughs> fan. So he was able to bring out that side of me that was still it's still dormant in my heart for sure. Man. And uh, I love the wrestling for the stories. It's just yeah. like what we've been talking about. There's yep. something beautiful about storytelling and, and having a good guy and a bad guy and mm-hmm. a, being able to get get people to feel emotions based on the way you tell a story. It's why yeah. movies are so moving is that you're able to tell a story in such a beautiful way and capture things. Right. So I just think there's something about that part of it, like the art of a promo. Like if you told me to go out and talk about flowers, I could say, so last week <laughs> I was going to give my girlfriend some flowers, but I decided I would wait till this week because I wanted to do it live in front of you guys here <laughs> at Monday Night Raw. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And then I, I couldn't, I was going to keep going, but I yeah. wasn't sure if I was a good guy or a bad guy. Mm-hmm. And I mm-hmm. don't know, but I, flowers. Yeah. You just look at a thing and you can cut a promo around it. Yeah. And there's that fun part of it too. And that's what a lot of it was, is improv. And they're doing physical improv yeah, on the wrestling. Are. So there's a whole lot of things that tapped into my interest with that. I don't keep up with it anymore. Though. No, yeah. I used to. So growing up, we used to have WWF nights, like the WrestleManias, like all of that. Like growing up, my cousin Dennis would be clotheslining us in his back bedroom. <laughs> He'd be doing all the moves on us. We'd all come out crying, you know, because we just got our our asses kicked by our cousin. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> trying to do the his whole, you know, his own sp- spiel, but. Yeah, I always wanted to be an astronaut. Astronaut. Yeah. See, that's that's a common one. A I lot of kids an pick astronaut. astronaut for some reason. I maybe it's just they look at stars. Kids look at stars and they think big. So maybe that's it. It was like my. I always loved the stars, but in high school, um, well, I'm sorry. When I was little, and it was like 1984, we saw the Challenger. Ooh. So, uh, so the Challenger. You remember that was the the um, spacecraft that that blew up yeah on entry uh, you know going up just blew up the challenger like that don't tell me that was what made you want to be an astronaut no but like (laughs) it was the story leading up to it it was the teacher who she was the first or one of the first females i think or something like that there was just something it was a woman teacher and she had curly hair remember her and it just made a really big impact on me and then when i was in high school we had a planetarium for our classroom, for astronomy class. So it was a study of the stars, and it was not astrology. It was astronomy, um, and it was beautiful. I was in love with the cosmos. It was amazing. So you got to sit, we got to sit in, in this dark space and looking at space every day. The only problem is I didn't have the math for it, like the math skills. There's math skills? Yeah, I told myself that I could never do it because I was terrible at math. But what what, is, what kind of math? You have to to be an astronaut. You have to be mad deep into math. Really? Yep. I wonder why. You have to be so good. You have to be so good. Yeah. Yeah. So I wasn't naturally. So therefore, I canceled myself. <laughs> yeah. I canceled myself. I'm like, I can't be an astronaut because I'm terrible at math. The end. Yeah. By the way, folks, if you can't co-sign yourself, no one else wants to. Right. That's <laughs> it. That's what we're talking about, right? Like, what are we thinking about ourselves? What are, what are we agreeing with in regards to ourselves? What we agree with, we empower. Well, I, I always like to say we are the stories we tell ourselves, mm-hmm. which is the same. We're saying the same thing in different ways, pretty much. So funny story. Not funny, but it's a story. Um, for a True Heart Photo, there was a grant competition that I was a part of and it was Michigan Women Forward and they were looking at women in mid-Michigan and they chose the top five women in mid-Michigan startup business owners. So I saw that. I was chosen yeah. as one of five um, startups and which was really exciting but at the same time you know I knew it was going to be a lot of work 
because this was for a large grant for my business. And I had to do all these things. I had all of these requirements. And I grew up in the city. I grew up just outside of the east side of Detroit, the east side. And I had a mentality that was around me, which was, I'm street smart, but I'm not smart. Right. So, and I would say it, I would say it a lot. I'm like, I'm from the hood. I don't know what that means. Like I didn't. And what I mean by that wasn't, it wasn't necessarily like demeaning to me. It was just the reality that I was not educated in this. You know, I don't know what that word means. I don't know what that fish is. I, I don't, I don't look at fish because I'm from the city. I'm, you know what I mean? Like I just didn't have that. And so during this process with this grant, I had realized I encountered through the opportunity, I had encountered a story in my heart that I had agreed with. I encountered something that was deeply embedded in me that I had had, I had, had an agreement that I would never be smart, that I would never, you know, it was more of a poverty mindset, basically. Like, I'm street smart, but I'm not smart smart. So as I'm trying to do all this stuff for this grant competition, they're asking me for stuff I don't even know nothing about. What's a business plan? What are business objectives? What does that even, what does that even mean? I don't know what half these, I, was, I had to do a word study every single day. But through the process, it was like I was encountering such frustration because I wasn't educated. I didn't choose to work hard. I didn't care about myself and I was angry about it. I was angry at where I came from. I was angry at the mentality and but I had to do something about it. I had to break peace with that agreement in my heart and in my mind. I had to break peace with the fact that I would never have those things, you know, and it came so hard. It was like blood, sweat and tears, anger, rage. Uh, almost giving up, but I did it, and I won first place with this grant. As a matter of fact, I took home the most money out of anybody because I also got the Crowd Choice Award, which was an extra thousand. What was? So, the, how did the competition even work? So basically, I entered. Um, I had to uh, submit like a concept paper, which P.S. I didn't even know what that was either. But I had to do that and. Um, Some financial projections, also didn't know what that was, had to do that, and um, they chose the top five. So then once I did that, they gave me a mentor, which was dope, had an amazing mentor, Kevin Kettles, love you, thank you, and he was from Wayne State University, and uh, I had to do a 10-page business plan. Ooh, Fun. That sounds page. Now, are we talking? You have to fill up every single page, like the whole thing. Like, can we, you didn't can we double have to. space? You didn't have to. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you. They gave you like all these different things that you should have included in your plan. So, yeah. I market research. What's market research? I don't. I don't know any of this stuff, man. It was so crazy hard. And um, But I had to research every single thing that they were suggesting should be within the business plan. And then I had to figure out what, how do I answer this for my business? You know, so it was crazy. And then I had to do a slide presentation and a three-minute pitch. Oh, boy. And I had to do that live. And I also had to submit my pitch to, um, ahead of time, I had to do a practice pitch with Comerica Bank officials. This is for True Heart Photo? Yeah. Ah, yeah. Okay. It was crazy. So then it was like a whirlwind. It was like over three months of work. I didn't take photos. I didn't do nothing. I just worked on this. It was crazy. It was it was crazy, but I had to break peace with a mentality that I didn't even realize was so deeply embedded in me. You know? It was crazy, but it was it, it was worth it. So now it's just like my capacity and my mind has expanded so much. My ability to dream for myself in my business has changed. Even like thinking local. I was thinking completely only local. No, it's expanded now. Like I have big dreams, big visions. And I know that it's only going to ever expand. It's, it's going to increase because I broke peace with what was no longer serving me. Back then, the, the thought process 
that I had was a survival tactic. It was what I needed to do to survive. The shame of not being educated. The shame of just not knowing and being stupid, you know? So I'm, I'm street smart, so that's okay. I don't, need, I don't need that stuff. I'll get it another way. Well, I was in a position now where I couldn't get it another way. You right. know what I mean? I, I entered this grant. I chose this. So now I couldn't back out because the first thing about me is that I'm not a quitter. I don't quit. Yeah, and I mean, so you often, uh, uh, pressure makes a diamond. Ooh. You often hear about stories where people put themselves in positions that That's were crazy. difficult for them solely so they can grow. That's partially yeah. my Chicago plan, as I know that yeah. that's not as simple as what I'm doing here. I know for a fact it's going to be more of a, a grueling process. There's more to do just to keep myself afloat there than there is here. And yeah. there's something about that that even though that's more responsibility, that pressure is what would make me better. And mm -hmm. I understand that and, and in a way that makes me more willing to do it. Like, I'd rather have to make more to live wherever I want to be because, you know, like, you don't want a studio apartment. You want a two-bedroom apartment with a bunch of space. <laughs> you can only do that by making a bunch of money. So I'm going to make a bunch of money and I'm going to be a millionaire, like I've been saying this whole time. Yep. But it's going to be a... Easier to get there, I think, because I'll have bigger hurdles to overcome. Like, I'll, I'll see the bigger picture even better because I'm able to overcome those things. So I mean, I'm looking forward to it in that sense. I think it's really important, too, to keep in mind that you who, who are you surrounding yourself with? Yeah, yeah, because you are the, are the energy you attract. Who are the voices in your head, like, around you? Who are speaking into your life? Who's inspiring you? You know, what, what do you want? Get around those people. Find the people that you want to become, not like them, but, you know, in that s status, that area of life. Learn, glean, you know, be inspired by people around you. Wh who is around you? Yeah, well, and actively listen to everybody, too, because you don't yeah. know who you are until you truly listen to others. Exactly. So, like, I... You know, got surrounded um, with entrepreneurs locally. So my mindset is local entrepreneurs. Yeah. But then <laughs> it changed. It's it changing. Deeper. It's, yeah, it's just like, this is amazing. This is beautiful here. And I'm going to continue to serve local entrepreneurs because that's my heart to do so because I'm such a community minded person. I really love that. But it's not just still gonna, it's not going to just be there. So I've already started to surround myself with people who are the next step ahead, right? It's not higher, it's just ahead in the journey. So I'm now I'm listening to podcasts. Now I'm leveling up, you know, with the voices that I'm listening to and surrounding myself with because there's a dream in my heart. You know, I didn't realize the dream was in my heart to be an entrepreneur. Again, I was content with just being Shawnee. You know, like, okay, cool, I mentor people, that's, but a business owner, never, never even dreamed of it for myself. But now it's like going even further. I'm pretty excited. So, what's your future vision for True Heart Photo? Ooh, um, and this is not, for me, this is not about status, it's not about money. Although I do, I'm doing this to financially, you know, have a stability for my future. I want that for my future and for my family's future. But who would not want to do what they love? Right. So I love people, but what I see in my future is stories on a, you know, being sought. I, I just see myself being flown out all over the world to capture people and help tell their story. Yeah. I just see it like worldwide. Like being in demand, being somebody who's trusted in the inner circle. Yeah, like Obama's got to make a statement, but he can't figure out the right person to ask him the question. Let's let's call Sean. It's gonna be me because the best person for him to talk because to. I'm somebody who's trusted with the heart. Yeah. If you are again taking it back to the beginning, right? If you're somebody who celebrates the downfall of another, you will never be trusted. 
among well, kings. You will never be trusted among leaders because we all fail. We all fall, right? But how do you handle that with people? That speaks volumes. Yeah. You know, it speaks volumes. And I know that because my heart is to love and to serve and to see people live from their true heart, and I see them as they've been created to be, not as they currently are expressing or failing, I see their heart. People trust you. I think people with trust themselves. principle, right? People trust that when when someone's truly principled. When they're like, true. Yeah, when they're true. Like when when you say that, that's a principle that you live by and they yeah. know that about you. There's no doubt about it. I mean, that's yeah. the integrity aspect yeah. of it. I think that's why people are open to share with certain people is there's just this integrity within the other person. Like, yeah. oh, this person's, I can trust this guy. And yeah. then they just start to say things they wouldn't regularly say. Trust is the foundation yeah. of everything. It's, a fo- it's the very foundation of our heart is trust, basic trust. That's what's formed. And that's how people, it's like a bridge. Like I said, I build bridges. I build trust. You know, and so I do see myself being in demand to help tell stories of, for people, you know, helping capture sacred moments. I'm trusted with sacred moments, you know. Um, it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. That's I mean, what I, see. I always worry that I always worry going into it. That, I mean, I don't know about you. But whenever I'm doing an interview or doing something, I'm always worried that so there won't be that s- rhythm between me and them. Mm-hmm. There won't be that dance, and it won't go well, and I won't be able to properly highlight them. Mm-hmm. Do you ever feel that that uh, that anxiety going into a photography session? Or yes. I, I do every time I do one of these interviews. I'm always worried. I'm like, ah, it's what really, are we going to talk about? Yes. And, you know, it's, it is really hard because I don't ever want to misrepresent somebody. Yeah. You know? So what I do is I usually check in as we're going to help prevent that like, or to help feel... stay on the same page. I'm showing them the shots. I'm showing them like, hey, this is what I'm capturing. Is this, how, how do you feel about this? Are, yeah. you, are you good with this? Do you like this? Am I capturing the right side of you? Am I capturing you accurately? You know, is this, you know, how is this with you? And that's a lot of the feedback that I get is that they just have such a great experience with me because I care about what they want and I'm genuine and just, I'm just loving and genuine and nice. I think one so, thing that shows through that too, like it's it's like speaking with your actions. like. Yeah. The fact that you're even willing to ask them and the fact that you're mm-hmm. being thoughtful, like that's what speaks to is yeah. that people see that and that speaks through itself. It's, oh, they care about how I feel. Yeah. And, and, okay, well, if they care about how I feel, then I guess I'm going to look at this person a little bit differently then. And a lot of people, photographers, artists, creatives, you know, they'll get in a space where this is my work. Yeah. Right, and and then it's just kind of like a, a competition between about, the photographer and the a how model. About, how about our work? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, like you are a willing participant. You are not just an object that I'm shooting, you know, that I'm capturing. You're you're a human being, and wh- what you think is, it matters to me. Yeah. You know, I hate looking at a picture that somebody will post to me, and I'm like, dang. <laughs> I mean, there's a little level of vanity there, like, I, oh, it's bad, but, you know, if they hear my heart in it, they're they're going to honor my request. So I want to honor them, you know. Um, there's only been a couple people who, you know, we've had to reconsider their photos or whatever, but I've been very open with them. Like, hey, this is my heart is to honor you. But it wasn't me that was uh, the problem. It was how they felt about themselves, they judge themselves harshly, you know? So that's why they didn't like the photo or whatever. But it wasn't me. The photos were absolutely beautiful. Yeah. But they couldn't accept their own beauty in those photos. Does that make sense? No, that makes so, perfect sense. It's, yeah. it's just... Uh, it, it, it. So you can't it's always not being avoid prideful. that. It's not being prideful as an artist and saying, oh, well, this is my work and yeah. I'm, I'm going to do whatever I want with it. Like it, It's being thoughtful of what the person that you're collaborating with. And it's a balance, right? Yeah. It's a balance because I can't change you. 
No. Don't, don't ask me to change your shape. Don't ask me to change your color. Don't ask me to change you like that. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I can't. I can't do that. That's. No, I'm not changing you like that. You know, yeah. I will bring out your natural beauty. I will bring out who you are, but I'm not changing you. This is not Vogue magazine. <laughs> <laughs> even if what, even if it was, they shouldn't be changing you necessarily. That's, that's mag- every magazine cover. It's ridiculous how, and, and it's just the, the norm to mm-hmm. just be completely rota brushed and, and but painted see, over. That's the thing that I envision in the future is like cover stories, right? But it's just the beauty of a person. Yeah. You yeah, know, I almost, it's, it's I almost like pictures beauty. where it's it's even a raw beauty, like where mm-hmm. it's where it's over sharpened and you can see all of their wrinkles and things like this. Like these aren't things that you that are even yeah. things to be ashamed of. It's we're all just naturally beautiful in yes. these ways. And and uh, yeah, yeah, I've always said too. I think a girl is so beautiful without makeup. Girls convince themselves they need it. They, yeah. they look great either way. Don't get me wrong. You can do yourself up great with makeup. Right. Don't get me wrong. But girls look so beautiful without makeup. It's a natural beauty thing. It's really I think I, it's just it's the I've said that since I was a young little man. <laughs> I've always thought a that. A young little man. Yeah. <laughs> like, but it's just sad that people get this. They stop seeing beauty in themselves. Mm-hmm. So, but and it's it, you got to help them see it. I I photography is yeah. a beautiful way to do it. Yeah. Wow. That's and so when it came to the grant thing too. Yeah. How. Did um I know you did a Facebook live when you received it. So did you have to give a speech on Facebook as well? Were you thinking about that? So it was basically they had never unmuted a contestant before that because this is like a yearly grant competition that they do. Yeah. And I had watched just studying them, you know, studying how these competitions went, and nobody had ever been unmuted. But my reaction was so animated, like you know, everybody else was like. Thank you so much. And I'm like, yes, that's right. Let's go. Like, I was like losing it, jumping up off the table. And they were just laughing. And um, and then I was like, thank you. And the lady was like, I want her to speak. Take her off of mute. And so then I just, I was so excited. I like, blah, 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 thank you so much. I didn't even really say anything because I was just so <laughs> overwhelmed with emotion. <laughs> because three months of work had just you know, culminated in this moment. And either way, even if I hadn't have won, I already won. Yeah. But it was just the victory of, you know, them seeing it too. It was the universe agreeing with you. Ooh, it was. It was It was so beautiful. It was a huge, huge um, win for me. And, you know, like I, I'm just so grateful to the people who've mentored me in the process, like Flint Soup, uh, Adrian and James. They're people who just really encourage local entrepreneurs and so many of the entrepreneurs that they have mentored and loved on and supported and given a platform to has risen in tremendous ways. And so I wouldn't have been here without the people that I surrounded myself with. Chest and Downs. Chest and Downs, my ride or die. Chest and Downs. Um, was True Heart Project. He was like my my partner in crime. He was my video guy. He was doing my editing. And even we just did a project this week. We did a video project for an organization that supports uh, survivors of sex trafficking. So we did like a fundraiser video. I don't do a lot of videos, but for that kind of stuff. And Cheston, he is my he is my guy. I just love him so much. He is a true heart. You know, he's a true heart for he sure. He really is. I just love. Love you, Justin. Thank you for everything you do for me. But yeah. when I met Justin recently, uh, about <laughs> like I was I was working at the farmers market. And he's a frequenter you, of there. How did you only just meet him? I know it's crazy. Oh my gosh, he's everywhere. Justin's I know, and I'm intertwined everywhere. with probably like thirty people who know him. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, he. Uh, one observation I had about that man, about that true heart of his, <laughs> is that he laughs easy and i love it because he makes me feel like i could be a comedian like i don't even have to try to make that guy laugh he's just got that type of personality where he's he's just happy to be there he's primed for laughter yeah he's <laughs> i got, love it man. he has a he has a beautiful laugh his laugh is just i don't know fulfilling in some way yes. when he laughs it yes. just fills your soul like <laughs> to where i'm like i'll keep telling jokes just to keep getting them to laugh <laughs> it feels Justin's great laugh somebody needs to like 
record it and just keep it. Yeah. Bottle it, bottle it up. If I ever get upset, I could just pull right? it up on MP3. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's been he's been my day one, and uh, he's still with me even now. I mean, just amazing partner in this. It's so funny because you just don't realize like who's going to be in your life and who's going to help move you towards your purpose. And you don't realize until years later when you see what they did to help you mm-hmm. get there. I mean, in the moment, it's even hard to see. Yeah. I mean, I stumbled across Cheston and I was speaking at a at a event and he was doing sound and lighting. Like, that was it. Yeah. And it's just crazy to think, like, the butterfly effect of that event. Like, if you hadn't met him there. Right. What? How would this, How would and your life actually, be now? <laughs> I was actually, I'm actually friends with his brother. So I knew his brother, but I never had met him, you yeah. know. And had we not had all of that moment, and he was recording me for that event. But had we not had that, like, I don't know if all this would have happened. Or at least not in this way. Not in this way. Yeah. And let me tell you something, I treat that man good that man asked me, I would give him the world because I'm just so thankful for him. Are yeah. you hearing this, Chess? And take notes. Take notes, but don't take advantage. <laughs> no, he would never. <laughs> he's, he's, all of a sudden, he wants to go out every he's night. He's probably laughing right now. <laughs> yeah, right. right. We're making him giggle. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so. I do love Cheston. I got, I got the, my, my heart shines right back at that true yep. heart for sure. He's, yep. uh, he's a beautiful guy. Yeah. And, uh, and, and what's great is that he's. I mean, I imagine a lot of the work that he's done with you, it's just out of the kindness of his heart, right? It is. Yeah. Like he, for True Heart Project, there was no income for this. There's no income on making videos about people on the street. There's no money there. We were both just doing it because, we, you know, he really believed in what I was doing and wanted to help me and come alongside me. You know, now with him, you know, when he does stuff with me, I... Yeah, I take care of him because he deserves it. He works so hard. Yeah. Yeah, he works so hard. So, What are some people that you met through True Heart Project and True Heart Photo that have really influenced you and given you a different way of looking at things? Ooh. There's got to be at least one. A different way of looking at things? I mean... Even just people who, who, like, you know, they really stick out to you. They really they really just, when you think about all the interviews you've done, you think, man, how about that guy? Yeah, like, I've had some really great, um, some really great interviews, and I will just say the ones that really impacted me. Um, one was Curtis. Uh, Curtis Wilson, skateboarder, and I did the video. It was called The Worth of a Man. How do you measure the worth of a man? And I was just so impressed. I just went into Crystal Joe's Diner. If y'all remember Crystal Joe's Diner, shout out. Oh, my God. Best breakfast. Missed that place. But anyway, so he was there, and he just came in from out of state, and he talked to everybody in the room. I mean, he was just incredible, and I just love him. Still to this day, me and Curtis, I just... I got mad love for you, Curtis, but he's just amazing. And he's like battled addiction. He's overcoming addiction and he's living his life. He's an overcomer. He's incredible. He's so strong. He's so creative. Um, And he is just, he's incredibly resilient as well. And he's the cat man. But anyways, so he was really dope. Um, Who else? I keep thinking about my girl, Regina Hatter, who is uh, Snacky Brown. Uh, she does bunk cakes at the Flint Farmer's Market. Check her out. Her bunk cakes are fire. And, you know, just her drive as a business owner has deeply impacted me. Um, she is so loving, caring, um, and connecting with me. And But... You know, there's there's people, there's clients, there's people that you meet, there's clients that you have that inspire you to be better, and she's one of them. She's one of them. She's just following what's in her heart and going for it. And she is she does not stop. She's grinding every day. So she's really inspired me too. I'm trying to think now that you got me on the spot. Who else? <laughs> um, You're in the hot seat. Right? I am in the hot seat. There are so many. I did... Um, A little photo of uh, baptism, which was really moving for me to see the pictures. Somebody who just recently was baptized in their faith and just to see their, you know, the emotion of the moment 
was beautiful. Shout out to Stucky. Um, these things were just, these v- pictures were beautiful and got baptized in a trailer park shed in a trough. It was so real. It was so genuine. It was true. Um, stuff like that. I mean, every single person that I photograph, every single person that I meet, they impact my heart. Every single one of them. They're, my, they're like my friends. You know, I'm making friends everywhere I go when I take pictures, um, connections. And, um, yeah, so, I mean, it's really, oh, my God, everybody. It's so hard for me to even say. But, again, I'm always in awe of creation. Every single person. Yeah. Every single one is it. It, 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 every single person impacts me in a specific way. Like Antoine with Slice of Flint. Um, that man was getting ready to have his own business, pizza business, and then COVID hit. So what did he do? He created a freaking trailer and made his own pizza oven from stuff that he got at Home Depot. And he's, he's literally in the lot over across from La Familia. Throwing pizzas. I mean, people love his pizza. Resilience. Like, I love community. I love resilience. I love people who are overcoming obstacles. And I always find them. Jason Bay, he's a Flint's first, you know, African-American beekeeper. He's dope. Beautiful smile. Everybody who sees him, they're like, man, his smile just lights up my heart. And he's like... He's he's doing the thing. He's following a dream. He's doing something that's healing. He's keeping the bees. He's keeping the bees. And he's learning from the bees. Like, he, he told me so many things about how bees behave. He's like, bees are teaching me about family. Really? Yeah. Like I'm going to get... Ah, seriously. I wish I was here for another week. I'd get this guy on the podcast. He's awesome. Tell me about the bees, man. He's awesome. I'd just have him tell me all of it. Tell me... Why did he say that? Do you know? He said that just because of how they interact with each other, how they care for the queen. Mm. And there's just like this whole dynamic of how they operate. Like there's a it's real just, community. Yeah, it's a community. It's just... And it's been teaching him. And it's like, that's healing. Well, and it's you nature know. that just does it itself. Yeah. Like, the bees aren't telling each other to do it. And he has genuine love for it. Like, I remember I was taking pictures of him season- seasonally. So, like, we we're, I think, just coming out of winter, he's like, man, I lost some hives. And, I mean, he was just so bummed about it. And it wasn't because he was losing money. It was because he lost bees. You know? He, he cared about them. He cared about the hive. He's learning how to do things by hand. He's not buying mass produced blah 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 he's got hammer and nails he's he's creating what the hives need to build their honeycomb and and to do their thing it's beautiful like there's people like that all around us and if we just take some time to get to know them you know you just see their strength you see their beauty you see their creativity and then you learn from them and every single person I've met, I've learned something from. So shout out to Surf, who was, not was, who is like uh, an OG for skateboarding. So he's a, gosh, he's got to be like mid 50s, upper 50s now, still skateboards. He's been skateboarding in Flint for forever and a day. It's got to be a guy out yeah. there that surfs named Skate, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they call him Surf and. He was just an incredible skateboarder. And when I put out that video for True Heart Project, um, people from California were like, oh, we know about him. You yeah. know, like, it's just, it's, we have legends all around us. There's been times where I've had people <laughs> on here, and it's somebody who doesn't have a huge social media following or anything, but those episodes do really well just because people connect with that person on yep. a personal level like yep. hey that guy i'll listen to what he has to say mm-hmm. like it's not always the celebrity you want on sometimes it is just that person that's made who's made people's lives different in his own way i'm telling you we're, we all are valuable in our own way we all change the world our, just like trauma comes in many shapes and forms mm-hmm. change comes in many shapes and forms mm-hmm. and the way that we make a difference can happen and on so many different scales it's not about feeding the whole world it's not about stopping world hunger and saving everyone it's about how can i make a difference in my everyday life with 
these people that are around me? How do I use these tools to make this difference I can today, right now? Yeah, and allowing them to change you. Yes, being open. An open mind can open minds. They, it's, if, I don't have riches, but I'm wealthy. Mm, that's great. I don't have riches, but I'm wealthy with people, you know, with hearts. They're, they're gems. They're, they, you can't even measure their worth because they're priceless. Who they are, what they've been through, you know, um, what they've survived and overcome and, you know, how they're moving forward. I mean, I am one of the richest people you'll ever see because of that, because of them. You listen to them. You hear their hearts. They trust you with their heart. They trust you with their story. You're in their life. You're cheering them. I mean, it's just beautiful. Yeah. I think your output gets better with better input. I think that knowledge isn't free. You have to pay attention. And mm -hmm. with that, you would be rich. Rich with knowledge, you see? <laughs> rich with knowledge. Yeah, because you're listening and you're, let, you're allowing those people to expand you in mm -hmm. a sense too you're you're truly listening that's why i would encourage active listening is it's not just hearing what they say and getting ready to respond and thinking this is what i'm going to say next and waiting for your cue to start yeah. talking it's actually listening to what they're communicating and placing yourself in that and understanding that that's a yeah. big part of it too meeting meeting on that heart to heart level it's that's an art that cannot even be taught it just has to be learned through experience yeah because listening is, you know, I think the more and, just more and more distracted we get as a society, the harder mm -hmm. it gets to truly listen to one another, too, to, to truly meet on that one-to-one -one level. Yeah, I miss that, honestly. I love it. That's why I do this. I, I, miss, I miss just genuine times of, like, walking down the street at night with somebody and just talking with them. Yeah. You know, or just sitting on a curb somewhere and just talking with somebody, you know, just chopping it up. I miss not having this, you know, I miss not having that in my, you know, attached to me all the time. Like, I... For the audio listeners, she's holding up a gosh oh, darn sorry. phone. A phone, yeah. Those I, pesky things. Sometimes I just, I miss the freedom of not having it, you know, but I still actively pursue those around me all the time. That doesn't change. But I just kind of miss the simple moments of being with people and... Because it's there, and and it's even if you don't use yours, maybe they get a phone message. Maybe they're maybe they're in the middle of a conversation and texts. Right. And that just kind of takes them away from that moment they're in with you, and that j just the option of that, just the fact that that's there, it, it 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 robs us of so much genuine interaction. Or even talking with somebody just in general, like, hey, I'll text somebody. Hey, can I talk? You know, hey, you want to talk? And, uh, yeah, what's up? through text and I'm like no I, I, I really want to talk to you is something wrong <laughs> can I get to context can you you know what I mean and yeah. it's just like everybody just wants it like that and I'm like oh I can't do this right now like yeah yeah my format of communication is this and if not yeah. this then phone calls I'm terrible at texting I hate texting and I think I just have an old school mindset yep. I, I hate it so much I can't even do it Yep. <laughs> like if you, it, it's it's a shame that I'm my own manager because it <laughs> it does my that skill does not work with yeah. being a man. You have to. It's it's just the one thing I text people for is is to schedule things. Or yep. if I'm if I have a friend that texts me and he's like trying to start a conversation, I'll I'll play into it for a little bit. But mm -hmm. at some point, you're gonna have to wait four days for a response because I'll just lose that thread. Yeah. I have a life going on in my real world. Right. That phone does not. I, I refuse to let it suck me in, like, and it will, and I it can't even at a certain point. Like, if I'm talking with you and we're having yeah. a great time, I don't care what my phone's doing right now, right? I, and it, I, I can't even operate both at once, so I just end up never using my phone at all when I spend time with people. But so many people don't do that. I know they have a conversation with you and they're looking down at their phone. La 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 la. Well, that's la, why la, I la. framed it the way I just did. And then did. I'm like, hey. <laughs> so blah 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 blah, and then I'll just stop talking yes because they're looking down so I'll just wait for them to be done because well, they what, what happens is you'll be talking and they'll be responding and then they'll look at their phone and like a lot of the time these people are telling themselves they're still listening I do the same thing I know oh, I what it, it is it. but it's like I will say to them 
like I, I'll be finishing my story. I'm in mid story, whatever it is, or I'm mid thought. And then once they're looking at their phone, like I realize, like, cause there's a cutoff. They just stopped responding yeah. now. And then maybe they pick back up, like maybe they join back in, but you're right. It's like, you have to wait. You have to wait because you just lost them. Yep. They're gone now. Yep. <laughs> they're totally they're gone. actually gone. They tell you that they're here, but they're lying. Well, they're it, not there. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're, they appear, they are like gone. Because I'm like, why are you talking? You're, you're texting somebody and I'm telling you a story. Like, yeah. So I'm just going to let you finish the text and then I'll finish the story when I'm done. Like, yeah. it's me trying to be polite for whatever you, you're doing. Obviously, you were okay with breaking the conversation and answering that. Okay, that's, there's an interruption. I'll just patiently wait. And, 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 you know, with that being said, there's always situations where you might have to pull the phone yeah, out real quick. Of course. What, what, what I'm really talking about, what like, I'm sure what you're really talking about is people who do it on uh, a criminal basis. Yes. It's like <laughs> an extended period of time. Like that is there, you know, okay, let's spend quality time together. Okay, cool. So I'm sitting there and then you're just on your phone. Yeah. You know, and, and I'm trying to talk to you and you're just like, uh huh. And you're looking down at your phone and you're just like, yep. It's like the families that go like, out no. to eat together, and oh. all four of them are on the phones. Did you see that there was a restaurant, and I don't know which one it is, but they were offering 10% off to families who, I think, either put their, didn't have their phones on the table. Oh, that's nice. That, sorry about that. Oh, you're all right. You're good. Um, but they offered 10% off their bill for families who did not have their phones on the table. Really? Mm-hmm. I like that. I like it, too. Just I like because too. I feel like that's... It's the only way we can fight this and incentivize yeah. against it. It's things like that. Uh, and there's concerts I know where you can't bring your phone in, and it forces wow. people to live in the moment. And and com- comedy shows, a lot of the time, yeah. there's no phone policies because you can't record their material, but that makes it so you're more in the moment. A lot unplugged, of these things. Unplugged weddings. Ooh. Yeah. Is that real? I, yeah, because I also officiate weddings. So, yeah. like, I'll do a wedding, and I will ask, you know, the bride and groom, Do you want this to be an unplugged wedding? And what that means is that the only one taking photos is the photographer. The only one recording video is the videographer. And so it's just like the bride and groom are so excited about this day and having you here. They want your full presence. They want you here. They want you to be a part of this moment. Don't worry about photos. Please put everything away. This is unplugged. Yeah. Like, this is a pure moment where you're just fully here and watching this sacred moment happen, you know, and there's a photographer and there's a videographer. If you want photos, you can order them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, you know, there's nothing that replaces your presence. Because we all know. We all know how it feels when we're in a moment and we're looking at a screen taking a picture when we could be looking at the real thing. Yep. And taking it in with our eyes. I and mean, you see it all the time. like Everybody. Well, there was a shot. There was like this famous photo or this photo that was out there. And it was like the whole crowd had their phones up like this. And there was a guy just like NBA player just dunking. But that's all you saw was photos. Yeah. I mean, sorry, phones taking photos. That's all you saw. It wasn't the crowd going, yeah, with their hands up. Yeah. It was the phones up and getting a picture or getting a video. But there was one guy in the photo, and he was just sitting there and watching it, and his face was, you know, lit up. He was in the moment. He was fully enjoying it. But the whole crowd... (laughs) Like, I'm serious. Every It was like every person had their phones up. A picture's worth a million words. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. Isn't that crazy? Because I never thought about guy. it that way. That mm-hmm. really is the difference now. I mm-hmm. mean, concerts, I've thought about it with sports. You're right. Yeah. And what's so crazy about that, too, is it's televised. Right. Like, we're talking about a televised event that you can go back and watch. You don't need a picture. Right. The, the, you might need one picture from that event. Yeah, one. Just take, <laughs> just take one. All it takes is one picture to spark a, a whole bunch of memories. Yeah, you, you know? don't. And if you want to spark the memories, go back and watch. It's recorded. You have a, you could get, maybe you have DVR. Like, there's a way to do this. <laughs> right. I know there is. Right. There's no way that you have to take a bunch of pictures. And then you think about the fact, too, that everybody had a camera. So everybody's taking the picture for you. Uh, yes. So you don't need to do this. 
It's just to me, it doesn't even make sense. If if I look around, and I see everybody holding their phone. It makes me want to put my phone away. Yeah. I I, I like almost recoil. Mm -hmm. I'm like, ah, that could be me. <laughs> I don't want to be those guys. But it's all of us. Yep. And I mean, there's always we all a, do it. I mean, yes. Like so, we're, I, I, we're, I, we're saying this, but yes. you know, you'll find us sitting on our phones, <laughs> just like you know. But it's just having those limits and remembering to be present. And vocalizing my hatred for the phone. <laughs> it's getting it out. What you agree with you empower. Like, yes. Like <laughs> I, I want people to, to I want people to be able to admit it. Because I know that most of us feel this way. Yeah. And we all we feel like it's cliche to say, Oh, I hate my phone. Like, no, that's real. Eat you put your phone it. down and just touch grass. I was walking on grass, grass with my feet the other oh day and it God. felt crazy. I haven't done that since I was like a baby. What I say earlier, baby little man boy, whatever I said. <laughs> but ever since then. Yep. And that's the thing. Like, nature is nourishing. It nourishes our spirit. It gives us strength. There's energy out there. Like, like it's a gift for us. We receive from it. When you use your five senses to take in the world around you, like, think about your five senses. Sight, taste, touch, smell. Like, you're feeling, you're taking it all in. What's the fifth one? Tight, sight, Wait. touch, taste, touch, taste, smell. smell, hear. Hearing. And you know Listen. what's crazy? All those senses? Listen. No thoughts are required for those senses. You just do them. You just do them. You have them. But, but when you're intentional, yes. it becomes powerful. When you focus your intention towards hearing. This morning I was outside because the birds called me. I heard them. And it was the wind blowing the leaves, and it was the birds singing. And I was like, I'm just going to sit and listen and take this in instead of my closed-up house hearing nothing, you know. Um, you know, the smell. I smiled yesterday as I walked out of Home Depot because the rain hit the pavement. And there's a certain smell in the summertime when the rain hits the pavement. I love that smell. It reminds me of summers growing up, you know, and it just filled my heart and it made my whole being light up. I smiled when I smelled that. And I started to look at other people like, do you guys smell that? You know, <laughs> but they probably wouldn't know what I was thinking. But, you know, I was just so happy to smell that smell. I was intentional. You know, it's raining, big fat drops. It's summer. Here it comes. I smell it. It's beautiful. You know? Um, we, we have to be focused. What are we taking in with our eyes? You know, what do we notice about that leaf? Do we even see the ants and consider what they do or how they do it, you know? Um, or how a bird flies in the air or whatever it is. That kind of stuff, it nourishes our soul. It strengthens us. And it also teaches us. When you listen, the universe is always talking. When you, yeah, I mean, there's so much to learn from the creation, you know, it's, it's beautiful. There's wisdom in it. There's wisdom in how an ant works. Yeah. There's wisdom in how a branch flows. You know what gets me about you know? that is just like when you see macro photography, just... Oh my God, don't even get me started on that. <laughs> I ants love are, it. Yeah, yeah, or spiders, or ants, or... Uh, like the, the the face of a fly even like there's so much you don't see because it's just so far beyond your perspective yes but that's there it's yes. always there it mm -hmm. truly is that detailed yep I was in Florida and there was this crazy storm coming in and I ran to the beach because I wanted to see the water and I wanted to get a picture of it with all the storm clouds and what was so beautiful was how dark those clouds were. It caused the beauty in the blue of the ocean, the blue-green color, to just pop. I mean, it was brilliant. Against the storm, so much beauty came out. Against the dark skies, the colors just sang. You'll have to look at the picture on my Facebook because it is beautiful it's amazing it's just like wow it makes you say wow you know there's beauty even in the storm but if i was not intentional i'm just gonna walk by it i'm not gonna let it speak to me you know yeah um so that's why i mean we have to intentionally use our senses to take in the world around us you know it'll teach us it could change our whole life one moment at the water you know 
at the ocean. <laughs> yeah. And I think uh, it's right around our time limit yep. here. So I think that's a nice way to wrap up. Yep. That's a beautiful thing to send them home with, right? Yeah. Where can they find you? So you can find me on Instagram. It's at trueheartphoto, T-R-U, no E. So T-R-U-H-E-A-R-T, photo. Same thing on Facebook. And all my website information is on those social media outlets. So and we can post if you want, uh, post the link to my website. You guys can check out my work. Get at me. Hit me up. Would love to capture you. Um, I don't do weddings, if anybody ever asks. I do not usually do weddings. Disclaimer, no <laughs> Disclaimer, weddings. Disclaimer, no weddings. But um, I love capturing sacred moments. I really do. So, And telling stories. So let me know if anybody ever needs anything. I got you. Yes. If you need a story Thank told, you. you know where to go. Thank you so much for listening. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for hearing us tell our stories. Mm-hmm. And go tell a story of your own, all right? Go tell your own story because no one else is going to do it for you. With that being said, Rose Radio, clocking out. Ain't nobody got-